Hi everyone. I've had a lot of questions about the Goal Zero home integration kit for the Yetis. So now that it's installed in my house, I thought it would be a good time to walk everyone through the installation and how it works. So this is my basement here. Uh, first of all, this is the meter for my rooftop solar system. And this is the sun power controller for that. And unfortunately that doesn't work during an outage. So that's why I'm looking into this alternate system. Over here is my electrical panel. And this, if we take a look at it, uh, first of all, was really poorly labeled. So I had a lot of slots here that were completely blank and it was kind of unclear. So one of the first jobs that I did was test all the circuits and figure out what each breaker did. And up top here, you can see all the wires going into the panel. And uh, this is a 200 amp service. So that's the breaker here at the top. And then you'll see that I labeled each breaker with what it does. And I busted out the label maker for this. And I know this seems a little OCD, but the reason I did this is I needed to really carefully prioritize which circuits I wanted to support in the integration kit. So I bought two kits, which means I have eight circuits total. And it's important to recognize that you can't just hook any of these circuits up to the Yeti. The Yeti, just like any of the small inverter generators like my Ryobi propane generator or even the Honda EU2000, um, only puts out a normal 110 volt AC plug. It does not have the larger 30 amp um, 220 volt output. So we have to keep the circuits to just a standard circuit. And this is a task that you're probably gonna to wanna to do with your electrician. So what I did is I had my prioritized list of circuits. Uh, I sat down with him, he popped the cover off, and I said, I'd like to do this circuit or that circuit. Uh, he would look at the wiring and say, nope, this is a 220 line, or this one is a two bar and it can't work. So there's a process that you need to follow where you need to prioritize, and then you need to see whether or not that particular kind of circuit can be powered by the Yeti. And that's something that your electrician can help you with. And you know, this is gonna be a bit of an iterative process. So I went through my breaker, I put little pieces of orange tape here for the circuits that I wanted based on my priorities. Um, I actually wanted to do my air handler upstairs so that I could keep the hot air going. And turned out that that was a 220 line, so I had to switch gears and move the tape around a bit to settle on a final design. So that's basically how you choose your circuits and it requires a little bit of professional input. So now that we're done with that, let's move on to the transfer panels. And you can see these are stacked. There's one on top and there's one here on the bottom. And the reason why we did that is because the conduit that connects these panels to my main electrical panel are only about 18 inches long and the cables in there are four feet. So it's gotta be pretty close. So it can reach all the way here and then potentially up to the top right for those circuits. So by doing them stacked, it made it possible to make those runs happen. And these panels come pre-wired. So basically you thread all the wires through this conduit, through this knockout on the side of my main electrical panel, and then thread them up and connect them to each circuit. You can see one here for the top two. And my electrician did a good job keeping these really tidy uh, these conduits do come with straight and 90 degree connectors, which is nice. All right, so let's take a look at our first transfer panel. So if we open the door here, my electrician was kind enough to jot down what was on each circuit. So A has the kitchen lights, B is the water heater, C is the garage and my cable booster, and then D has a bunch of miscellaneous uh, overhead lights downstairs for my hall and bathroom and dining room. He also jotted down what circuits they correspond to. So flipping these over from the line power to the Yeti is super easy. You can just, let's say we want to do the uh, kitchen lights, just take this A switch, temporarily flip it to off, give it a second or two, and then flip it up to Gen. And now we're generating power from the Yeti and powering our overhead kitchen lights. So it's that easy. And below here you can see there is a 15 amp breaker for each one of these circuits. So it's really, really straightforward, really easy to use. 
Um, some of these ProTrend units actually have a power meter on top, but we don't need one here because we have a digital power meter on the Yeti itself. So Golzio was able to probably keep costs down and keep this really simple. Um, one thing to note is when you're sizing a transfer panel and you're designing it, if you have one of the larger panels that maybe has eight or 10 slots, there's this whole art of balancing circuits. Um, but in this kind of a transfer panel, you don't have to worry about it. So you can just wire them up A, B, C, D and not have any problems there. All right, looking at the bottom transfer panel, you can see we have a bunch of uh, lights in my internet closet. We have the refrigerator. We have the basement outlets, which powers my sump pump. And we have the microwave and an outlet that's attached to it in the kitchen. And again, it's the same process. So you just come down here and you can flip whatever circuits on and off that you want. And so it's nice. So if we want to just flip one circuit over to the Yeti, we can, or we can flip as many as we want. And one thing to note is that each one of these home integration kits or transfer panels are completely independent. So there's no summing or relationship between these panels. You could have one, two, three, four, however much you want to add, because really they're just hardwired um, from the transfer panel into the four circuits that you want on your main panel. So there's no connection between them other than that. So uh, there's a lot of flexibility here in terms of your installation. Okay, so now that we've talked about how these panels hook into my main electrical panel, let's talk about how I get power from the Yeti into the transfer panels. And so I was originally hoping on putting my Yeti back here, but because of the long DC cable runs to my solar panels, that was not an option. So my new plan here is to get this heavy duty 10 gauge extension cord. And at the end here, there are three plugs. So I can plug those directly into each transfer panel. And you can see this goes up and it has to loop around a bit because there's a lot of wires in this part of the basement. And we'll just follow this along here. And this is a 50 foot extension cord and that's why it's a 10 gauge cable so this is rated at i think 1875 watts or 15 amps so um, there shouldn't be too many losses moving this here and we're going to speed this up a bit here so you can see how this goes so you know it just goes above all my plumbing here it sneaks underneath here and then this is the back half of the basement so you can see why this is a pretty long run um, it's important to note that, you know, all the way along here, this is attached to the beams. You can see an example of that here. Just wanted to make sure it was secure without putting any pressure on the wire. So I got these little clips and then it comes all the way over here by the back door. So right now we're really close to the back deck. You can see the big power cord comes down and plugs right into the Yeti just like that. And my plan is to keep the unit back on this side of the basement because it's very, very close to where I'm going to be setting up my solar panel. So those runs will be short. So one thing I need to do is keep the Yeti charged. So this is the Anderson power pole connector going into the MPPT input. And I have this fast charger that I built and there's a video on that. And this fast charger is plugged into this trip light surge suppressor in case we get hit by lightning. And that is plugged in here in the ceiling to this new GFI outlet that I had the electrician put in. That way I can always keep this plugged in and keep the Yeti at 100%. So I thought it would be useful to walk through this scenario of a power outage. So first of all, I'm not going to keep this extension cord plugged into the Yeti at all times. It's actually illegal to use a extension cord as a full-time power delivery device. So I'm going to leave it unplugged and just hooked over itself. And you can see, I can just plug this right into the Yeti when I need to. And then I can press the button on the front of the Yeti to activate the inverter. So now there's power flowing from the Yeti down this 10 gauge cable. And one thing I wanted to mention too, is this cable is very intentionally tacked up here with this connector. So it's basically floating because this is a heavy cable. And let's just say that the front panel AC outlets on the Yeti are not super, super heavy duty. So if we follow this cable all the way back here to our transfer panel, we're getting there just a couple more feet, then I can show you how we then hook this up. So coming down the cable here, you'll see the three female ends of the power cable. 
Uh, one is available, so I can plug whatever I want into it. And the other two here are occupied by the small cables that are hooking into the transfer panels. And you'll probably remember in my unboxing that the home integration kits actually come with a really heavy duty 14 gauge um, 10 foot cable to plug your Yeti into each one of these. I got a little OCD and actually bought a pair of Triplite three foot tw uh, 14 gauge cables to plug in here just because I didn't want a huge mess of wires. So these are really short. Uh, I Velcro them to the side so they stay out of the way and I kept them cable tied. So then all I have to do is grab these cables and I can plug them right into the units. So at this point now, once I plug these in, there's power going into each of these transfer switches. All right, now we're ready for the fun part. So remember, you don't have to do anything with the main electrical panel. Everything can happen here on the integration kit. So on this top panel, let's do the kitchen lights and also do some of the lights in the dining room and hallway just to get that out of the way. So first of all, that's circuit A for the kitchen. We'll flip it up to Jen. And now we'll have lights in the kitchen. And next we'll throw circuit D. So now we can get lights in the hallway and dining room. So there you go. And in our bottom transfer panel, let's do the refrigerator, which is B. And we'll also end up doing the microwave. So let's start with B. Click, click. And now we've got a fridge. And this is a pretty big fridge. It's a 36 inch counter depth fridge. And uh, I'll do some usage testing so you know exactly how much power this uses over the course of a day. And let's do circuit D and now we've got our microwave and we chose this because we also have a plug here so we can use that to plug other things in in case we need to. All right, so that's everything. So we can close our bottom transfer panel here and then we can hustle over to the other side of the basement and we'll see how much power we're using in the Yeti. So let's run over there and well, that's not too bad. So we have a ton of lights on upstairs, the fridge is running and we're using about 200 and something watts. Uh, when I did some testing, most of the time I was in the 200 to 250 watt range. When the fridge would kick on, it would kick over to say a thousand or so briefly and then settle back down. So. Um, so far the Yeti's been doing really good for powering these kinds of circuits. And um, the only problem I've run into is running the microwave at full power and having the fridge kick on at the same time. All right, so so far we've talked about getting power out of the Yeti during a power outage, but how do we get it back in? So in my hand, I'm holding now the Anderson Power Pole 15 foot extension cable, and that goes up through the wall and there's a box on the outside and that will connect to my two Boulder 100 folding panels. So the idea is we can go from the panels through the wall in one shot and then go right into the Yeti. So the Yeti is as close as possible to the solar panels without being outside in the elements. And the solar panel should charge the Yeti about once a day if we have full sun. But sometimes we're gonna need some more power if it's nighttime or we're using a lot of juice. So I have this propane generator. This will put out 700 watts continuous. So I wanted to connect this into the Yeti as well. So this gray box on the left-hand side is going to be an inlet and it's going to have this cover on it here. So I can plug an extension cord right in there and that comes down the wire and plugs into this box over here. So I can now just plug my power adapter directly into that box or I can plug it in to this front box and take power from the panel. So that's how I can sort of switch between generator power and power from the panel. And my four wall chargers can put out the 250 watts that I need to keep going indefinitely, as long as I have propane or sun. Well, I hope this video helped you understand how everything works. And please feel free to ask questions in the comments and I'll try to answer them in my next video. Thanks for watching.